So many image file formats, and you know that makes things confusing, doesn't it? Um, I want to talk about six different image file formats during this episode. Um, six that I think you're going to use most frequently. It's the file formats I use most frequently, and it's the file formats. It's the ones I come across most frequently as well. So... Let's see here, image file formats. All right, the first one I want to talk about is XCF. And XCF is GIMP's native format. And it, it saves everything in your image. It saves your layers, your selection, your channels, your paths, and, and a lot more. So my suggestion when working in the GIMP is that you always save your image that you're working on in its native format which is XCF so if you ever decide to go back and edit that file again it still contains all the information that you've created in GIMP the only time I delete my XCF files when I know that I'm not gonna I'm not gonna need to go back in and edit that image again so, but when I start my project, I save my image, images in XCF format, and then I just export it to whatever format I want. And I think that is a, I think that's the best way to do it. Um, the only cons with XCF file is that it's a non-display format. Now, on my operating system, my applications. Uh, display XCF format just fine, but on a Windows and Mac, unless you've got a plug-in for your file browser or you've got uh, an image viewer like I have um, that can display XCF formats, it's not typically a format you're going to use to display images or upload images or you know send them to someone else. All right, so moving on to the jpeg format that's probably the image file format that you find most frequently i think that's what most smartphones save images in it's uh it, it's pretty common on web pages jpeg files and the reason for that is it's it's very it's a very compressible file but um so it compresses the files pretty efficiently and it's universally supported for display so just about any image viewing application out there can view a JPEG file. The cons with the JPEG file is that it is a lossy compression, so you do lose some of the image quality when you if you compress it highly. You know, if you if you don't compress it very much, you won't lose um, much image quality. The more you compress it, the more image quality you lose. Um, the more that you edit a JPEG file and save it the more the image becomes degraded every time that you edit it and it doesn't support transparency. So those are the cons of the JPEG file format. Um, I never save my images in JPEG format. If I'm making a thumbnail for one of my videos, I, I make those at full resolution, 1920 by 1080. I will export those in PNG format. Unfortunately, some sites won't allow you to upload an image larger than two megabytes. So if it's over two megabyte, I have to export it in JPEG format, but I will only compress it enough to get it below that two megabyte limit so that it loses the least amount of quality, you know, that I can, that I can, uh, I, so that it maintains the greatest amount of quality of the image. Okay, so, and the file sizes are pretty small which is one of the reasons why JPEG format is so popular. The next format is the format that I love to use when I'm exporting my images for print or for display or sending them, you know, as an attachment to an email, whatever, because a PNG is a lossless format. It, the, the file sizes are larger, much larger than the JPEG format, but you can export it to PNG, you can compress it, and you don't you lose any of the original quality of the image. If I'm taking prints, photo prints that I'm going to print personally, or if I'm taking them to a professional print shop, I always give them PNG files to work with. It supports full transparency. 
Um, any amount of transparency that you want to provide in your image, it supports. And it's supported by all browsers. And the only con with the PNG format is that it, the file sizes are larger. The GIF image format. We all have seen GIF images and web embedded in web pages because they support animation. And that is the one pro for a GIF format. And that's the only reason I could think of that you would use a GIF format is that it supports animation. The downside to the GIF format is it only supports 256 colors per image. So um, not true color images by any stretch of the imagination. It supports transparency, but only full transparency or no transparency. So you can't have levels of transparency in the image. That's the downside of the GIF format. One of the formats that I've come across much more frequently these days when I download an image from the web is WebP, referred to as WebPy. The, the reason that that came about, and it was developed by Google, I think back in 2010, but the reason they developed this format was they want to use it to replace the GIF format, the JPEG format, and the uh, PNG format. So it has a re really good compression algorithm. So it doesn't lose as much quality as like a JPEG file at the same size. So compressing a WebP image down to the size of a JPEG file the WebP image will retain more of the image quality than the JPEG will. That's a big plus. And it supports transparency and it supports animation. So JPEG doesn't support transparency. GIF supports animation, but it only supports full transparency or no transparency at all. And the WebP format supports highly compressed image files for small file, file sizes. It supports animation and it supports different levels of transparency, which is why they developed that. It has to support all three of those in order to replace um, all three of those image formats, JPEG, PNG, and GIF. So it's not as common yet, but it'll get more and more popular on down the road. GIMP does support reading and writing WebP format files, so you won't have any problem with that. Um, being supported by GIMP and um, it's it's supported on my in my file manager and my operating system Linux so I don't have any problems using it and then the next format is the raw format and that's proprietary format and I have a Canon EOS TI2 Rebel um, digital camera and it saves in the Canon raw format which is CR2 or raw Canon raw format number two. So the pros of, of those proprietary formats with cameras is that they contain lots of image information and high depth color channels so that the images look really good. The problem with those formats though is other than DNG which is a, a raw format um, they're not supported by a whole lot of applications. You really need a specific application to be able to read raw image files. So what I typically do is I take those raw image files and I convert them into PNG format before I work on them in GIMP. So that's that's the bad part of raw image files. And every, re, every revision of camera that comes down the pipe, they may change the specification for the raw image format. So the raw image format is never gonna be a viewable format where every application, you know, image viewing application that you have is going to be able to view it but it does have its purpose and I like the fact that my camera does save it in raw image format so that the colors are clean and crisp and the images contain a lot of information to begin with you want the cleanest remember what I said in earlier videos you want the cleanest sharpest um, image to begin with your source material needs to be as clean and sharp as possible to begin with because all the work that you do on it is not going to be ever be any better than the than the original quality of your media, so keep that in mind. So um, I hope that clears up some of the confusion around image formats. We'll discuss um, these image formats again in future tutorials. 
but I wanted to kind of remove some of the confusion about the uh, native format for GIMP and the formats that I use and the WebP format that you're going to see more and more frequently now. So just know that that is also supported in GIMP. That's a wrap, and I will see you in the next episode.